Hey everybody, welcome to uh, another episode of the Fantasy Football Start, Sit, and Touchdown Predictions. This episode is about tight ends. Uh, before we get rolling, oh, I'm going to go game by game, uh, tight end by tight end, to just give you the touchdowns and predictions. I apologize everybody, although I had a huge projection for uh, George Kittle this week, I didn't get this video out in time, so I'm sorry, but let's be honest, you know, you probably would have started Kittle anyway. Um... Yeah, you know, I had some internet issues. We had Halloween, all that stuff. So uh, I've been behind the eight ball all week this week. But, uh, you know, here we go. I'm catching up now. Uh, before we get rolling, please, two seconds for two clicks, as I always say. A like and a subscribe. The quicker we become a YouTube partner, uh, the better our production values will be because we actually have some features unlocked for us. We're really eager to get there. Um, so please help us out there. A like and a subscribe. Let's get moving. First game of the week that I can talk about now because San Francisco and Arizona is behind us is the London game. Houston versus Jacksonville. Fells, I think you need to pick him up. He has three games this season with two touchdown passes. Deshaun Watson likes him in the red zone. Pick him up. You should probably start playing him every week. I have him as a play, and I have him projected at about a half a touchdown, so that's pretty good. For Jacksonville, you know, I don't really like the tight ends for Jacksonville. Shaughnessy or whoever they, Oliver, whoever they're deciding to throw to, I have them as a sit. Chicago versus Philadelphia. Trey Burton, come on, man. Uh, everybody last year, everybody wanted Trey Burton to be good. This offense, you know, this system, ugh, I don't know. He disgusts me. I have him as a sit this week. Sorry, Chicago fans. I have him as a sit, uh, but you know what I'm talking about. For Philadelphia, Zach Ertz is being bullied, I think, physically manhandled. Um, he hasn't been playing well this season. Uh, Dallas Goddard, to me, is more primed to take over that. Now, I still have Zach Ertz as a start uh, this week, um, but a fringe start. I think Dallas Goddard, we're watching him slowly take over. Uh, the relevancy, especially in the red zone when, when coverages get tight and people can bully even a little bit more. I like Dallas Goddard more going forward. I, I really do. I can't believe I'm saying that, but I really do. Uh, Indianapolis versus Pittsburgh. Uh, I like Eric Ebron to get in the end zone this week, um, so he's definitely a start for me. Uh, for Pittsburgh, uh, Vance McDonald, I think, will have a decent game. I don't think he gets in the end zone. He's at about a .4 projection for me. I think that's more the touchdown in this passing game is more likely to go to Juju this particular week. Uh, but, uh, you know, Vance McDonald, I think is a start. I, I stay away from Van Depp there. Minnesota versus Kansas City. Look, you know, I know if Thielen is hurt, and so maybe some people out there might be thinking, well, if Thielen's hurt, maybe some targets are going to go around to Kyle Rudolph. I don't like Kyle Rudolph this week. I think what would happen is Minnesota would integrate, and this is what they did with Washington, in my opinion. They integrated Dalvin Cook a little bit even more into the passing game, and then to spell Dalvin Cook because of that extra usage, they use Alexander Madison a little bit more. So from a fantasy point of view, if Thielen's out, I like Madison more, not Kyle Rudolph in the passing game. Uh, but for Kansas City, I think Kelsey's a definite start and um, a, a definitely a touchdown candidate here. My fantasy um, football projections, even with Matt Moore, they, they like this uh, Kansas City passing attack, which is interesting because Minnesota's defense is so strong, and they usually have Minnesota competition projected very low. Uh, this particular week, they're spitting out some really high numbers there. I'm, I'm kind of surprised by it there I can tell you right now between the receivers and Kelsey you know it's probably projected at like four touchdowns between them that that's not going to happen um, against this Minnesota defense but Kelsey's a start this week for sure and I think uh, he's more he's more likely than not to catch a touchdown pass Jets versus Dolphins um, you know keep an eye on Herndon I think if he's playing you know Griffin had a really nice week last week if Herndon plays in there you gotta you gotta pay attention to him um, probably not a start for me but a daily fantasy budget play uh, from Miami, uh, Gesicki, no, I'm, I'm out. I'm out on Gesicki. He had an opportunity last week. He had a deep throw kind of in the red zone. Um, he could have gotten that touchdown. I had him as as a daily fantasy possibly budget play last week, but I'm off of him this week. Uh, Washington versus Buffalo. I'm staying away from this Redskins passing game against Buffalo. Buffalo, you know, they kind of got dominated by Philadelphia last week. I think they're going to come back strong. Um, so that's poor timing for the Washington Redskins to play Buffalo. But but I think Buffalo is going to lock Washington down. Um, as for Buffalo, uh, you know, Tyler Croft, Austin Knox, I don't have either one of them as a start this week or a touchdown candidate. For Detroit versus Oakland, I actually have Hawkinson as a start um, and a touchdown candidate. I think he's he's at projected at about a .65, .7 in that area. So more likely than not to catch a touchdown for Hawkinson this week. I have him as a start. Now for Oakland, um, I think Darren Waller is definitely a start and will get in the end zone. And uh, pay attention again to Foster Moreau because uh, they like to use him on the goal line as well. And uh, he's a very talented player. So Oakland, even with some of their wide receiver issues, I know Terrell Williams has been banged up. They've been still been able to move the ball with the tight end. So very, very good. Uh, for Tampa Bay and Seattle, um, I don't have either tight end as a start or a touchdown candidate for Tampa Bay. For Seattle, look, I said it last Last week, this is the last time I'm going to make this projection if it doesn't pan out. Jacob Hollister, I have projected as a really nice game. Um, Matchup-wise, this is a really good one for him. So if he doesn't produce, 
I'm kind of out on Jacob Hollister, but I think he's going to get in the end zone. I'm going to be bold a second week in a row. I'm going to double down, and I'm going to go with Jacob Hollister, <clears throat> and I think he is also a, a touchdown candidate this week. One, maybe even two. I cannot believe it. Um, that's a risk for me saying that because I could look like a super ass if I, uh, if I get that wrong, but it is what it is. Cleveland versus Buffalo. I don't like the Cleveland tight ends, whether it's Seals, Jones, or Harris. Uh, Denver, I don't like the uh, – I don't like Huerman. I don't like uh, um, uh, Fance. And uh, I almost call him Taco Fall, the Boston seven foot six center or whatever he is. <laughs> Taco Fall. Uh, Noah Fant. Um, I, I don't have him as a start either. New England versus Buffalo. New England, uh, Ben Watson, not a start. Lacoste, I, I, not a start. Uh, Baltimore, I actually don't have Mark Andrews as a good projection this week, but I think you have to start him. Um, and I think that at Baltimore. If New England, you know, as I would predict, I think New England's going to do everything they can to keep um, uh, Lamar Jackson in the pocket and spy him and all that stuff. They're going to need these tight ends to produce. I think Baltimore's really going to try to work, you know, Hayden Hurst, Boyle, and Mark Andrews, all of these guys, and then try to throw over the top to uh, Marquise Brown. Um, I like Miles Boykin. I like Snead just fine, but I think this is a tight ends week. Um, so even though my projections don't particularly like the tight ends for Baltimore, I would definitely, definitely, excuse me, definitely play Mark Andrews. I just really wouldn't go there in daily fantasy football this week. Uh, for Dallas versus um, the Giants, I do not have Jason Witten having a nice game. I believe Witten scored against, if I'm not mistaken, scored against the Giants earlier this season. Uh, I, I think that would have been week one. Um, I apologize, uh, Dallas fans out there, if I'm misremembering there, but I thought Witten got in the first time. I don't have him getting in this time. Actually, you know, interestingly enough, I actually have Jarwin uh, as the more likely to get in the end zone um, for Dallas. So if you're really, you know, digging deep in a Sunday or a Monday night matchup in daily fantasy, maybe you could you could play Jarwin there because uh, I think he'd be inexpensive. But I wouldn't put him in my lineup for the Giants. I think Ingram is a start. Um, I don't have him. I don't have him likely to get in the end zone. It's kind of a coin flip, uh, but I do think he'll get you enough catches and yards regardless to uh, to have a nice game. So there you go. That takes me through the tight ends. I do the uh, all, every position, uh, position, so I also do the uh, quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers, so check out those videos. Check out our whole Week 9 playlist as well. I have game previews. I have a lot of stuff in there, not just this stuff. So it's all pretty cool stuff in my opinion. Once again, please like and subscribe. Help us grow. Comment. I'll comment back, um, you know, time permitting, and uh, we'll catch you on another episode soon. Thanks, everyone.